In this video, I show examples of cling, also known as skid or kick, which is an excessive amount of throw, more than the normal amount, caused by a chalk mark at the contact point between the cue ball and object ball. I also demonstrate a simple cling test and use it to characterize how likely various chalks are to cause cling. The chalks tested are master, teom or tome, magic chalk, and kamui. Let's first look at an example of cling. I'm playing 8 ball shooting stripes. I need to use soft speed on the 13 ball shot to hold for the 8 for the win. Soft speed shots result in the most throw, so for this shot I'm actually aiming to overcut it slightly, knowing the cue ball will throw the object ball a little. For more information on when and how to adjust your aim for throw, see the throw tutorial page linked in the video description. Notice that I've aligned the stripe vertically along the line to the pocket. If there were no throw, the stripe would remain vertical as the ball rolls to the pocket. But because there is throw, there is also a small amount of spin transfer that makes the stripe wobble. See the spin transfer link in the video description for more information and examples. If the speed were any faster, I would not have left a shot at the 8. Now I'm adding chalk to the contact point on the 13, which causes cling. Notice how much throw and spin transfer results. Obviously, you don't want this to happen during an important game situation. This is an extreme example, with the slow speed and lots of chalk on the ball, but cling does happen during normal play, fortunately infrequently. Here's an example where cling is almost impossible to avoid. I need to pocket the 13 and follow up table for a shot at the 8 for the win. If the cue ball were a different distance from the object ball, the shot is easy to execute. However, when the cue ball is certain distances from the object ball, cling is difficult to avoid with a straight follow shot like this. The best way to determine the distances is to start with the cue ball touching the object ball with a red spot at the contact point. Then roll the cue ball away until the spot is at the expected follow shot cue tip position. Here's another view. If the tip hits the red spot, the chalk mark is guaranteed to end up at the contact point between the cue ball and object ball, resulting in cling. With a straight shot like this, cling causes the cue ball to hop and lose much of its top spin while imparting bottom spin to the object ball. Obviously, this is not the result we wanted. If you set up and shoot this shot carefully, cling will happen every time, and you will find it very difficult to follow forward enough. Here are two more examples. Here's the shot in slow motion. Notice the cue ball hop and loss of topspin. Also notice how the number on the 13 ball starts off going down due to the transferred bottom spin. As we saw before, with the cue ball a little farther away from the object ball like this, the shot works fine with no cling. Now I will do a simple test to show that all brands of chalk cause cling. Here's the setup for the shot. I will hit the cue ball squarely into the first of two frozen balls, causing the second ball to throw offline. I always orient the black stripe of the second ball vertically, so you can clearly see the throw-induced spin transfer. With a straight shot, the second ball does not throw at all, and the stripe rolls straight. But at an angle, even with perfectly clean ball surfaces, the second ball throws and spins quite a lot. I've placed a golf tee on the rail as a reference for the normal or expected amount of throw, with no cling. If much more speed is used, the throw amount will be less. And if much less speed is used, the throw amount will be more.
Here is the speed I will attempt to use for all of the remaining shots in this video, but I'm not perfect, so we should expect some slight variability in my test results. Now I'm adding a chalk mark to the contact point to see how much throw increases with maximum cling. I have this direction marked with a golf tee also. Now I want to show that cling also occurs as a result of a chalk mark left on the cue ball by a normal shot. First I chalk the tip, making sure there is very good coverage, especially in the center. I am starting with master chalk. Now I hit a medium firm stop shot to create a natural chalk mark on one of the cue ball red spots. Here's an example of what the chalk mark looks like after the shot. With a firmer hit and softer tip, the size of the mark would be larger, and with a softer hit and harder tip, the mark would be smaller. Now I place the natural chalk mark at the contact point between the balls. This results in the same amount of cling we saw before. Now I carefully clean the chalk marked contact point on both of the frozen balls before the next test. Notice how I wet my finger and scrape the ball surface with my fingernail to help ensure all of the chalk particles are removed. I also carefully remove the chalk from the tip with a paper towel every time I change the chalk I plan to test. Now I'm applying magic chalk. Here are the cling tests for the remaining chalks. Notice that all result in very similar amounts of cling, although Kamui creates a little more cling than the others. Now I'm going to demonstrate a simple test to help determine how frequently a particular brand of chalk might lead to cling. Just as before, chalk the tip and hit a stop shot. Now put the cue ball on a marked spot about a diamond off each cushion. Position the chalk mark up with the cue ball in the same orientation each time and hit a three cushion shot to the corner with top right spin. Now do the cling test with the spot chalk mark at the contact point. Then measure how much the ball throws. I'm using an on-screen scale indicating the percentage of maximum cling relative to the normal amount of throw. Alternatively, you can have a friend look where the ball hits the cushion and measure the distance with a ruler. I will round all readings to the nearest 10%. Here. The throw is about 90% of the maximum amount of cling expected. As before, I carefully clean off the chalk marks from both balls and rechalk the tip before the next test. I now repeat the entire procedure, increasing the number of shots to 2, 3, 4, and 5 before the cling tests. Here's the second test for master. Here's the first shot. Again, I carefully place the cue ball the same way each time with the chalk spot facing up with the ball in the same orientation. Now I'm adding a second shot before doing the cling test. Here, the amount of throw is 60% of maximum cling. I'll quickly run through the remaining five tests for each of the four chalks and summarize the results at the end.
Here's a summary of all of the results. Remember, each number recorded is the percentage of maximum clang created by a chalk mark after a given number of shots. I've marked with an asterisk values that seemed a little unexpected or unusual. Obviously, we should expect some variability, partly because my cling test shot speed wasn't perfectly the same for every shot. Also, the chalk marks on the cue ball can be a little different every time and the mark might wear off differently depending on how the cue ball slides and hits cushions during the pre-test shots. I tried to be as consistent as possible with cue ball orientation and pre-test shot speeds and spins, but there is also variability here. On two of the tests, there was practically no cling. In these two cases, the chalk mark was not really visible because it somehow managed to wear off during the pre-test shots. But in every other case, the chalk marks resulted in cling and many times close to the maximum amount, even after several shots. Here are some conclusions from the video. All chalk brands resulted in cling, even after numerous shots. Chalk marks on the cue ball wear off and create less cling after more shots. This effect was most consistent and evident with Master and Teom chalk. Magic chalk doesn't seem to stick to the cue ball as much as some others, but when it does, it results in more cling. The often heard claim that Taom chalk results in significantly less cling than other brands is obviously wrong. Cosmetic grade chalks like Kamui stick to the cue ball more than other brands, resulting in greater and more frequent cling. During a game, a chalk mark adds to the cue ball on every shot, causing the number of marks to grow with more shots. Older chalk marks result in less cling, but as the results of this video clearly show, even a chalk mark five or more shots old can result in cling and a missed shot. Now for some useful advice. Remember, always clean the cue ball every chance you get, before each break and every time you have ball in hand. And if you are playing in a refereed match and you see large or numerous chalk marks on the cue ball, ask the ref to clean the ball before taking the next shot. And if the cue ball cannot be wiped and it is full of chalk marks, especially large ones, use gearing outside spin if you can to prevent cling. See the link in the video description for more information. Don't use cosmetic grade chalks that apply and stick to the tip too easily because they also stick to the cue ball and can result in larger and more frequent cling. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notifications and check out the resources and other videos linked in the video description below.